before you can actually get a hawk, you have to prove you've got the means to care for it. So if you took the sport up, you'd actually sit or in an exam, you'd get all your housing and equipment ready and checked by a game warden to make sure you've got facilities, and then you'd find an experienced falconer who takes you on as a as a spun, as a apprentice, and with that person's help, you trap a red-tailed hawk from the wild, you train it and hunt it as your bird for at least two years under the guidance of your uh, your sponsor, and then if it all goes well, you go up to the next level. They are actually telling the truth. They're not aggressive. Um, they're afraid of us. That's the hardest thing about training them is to overcome their fear. So this is an African tawny eagle, actually bred in captivity in England, and um, she's 24. 24. It doesn't look Same a day age. over 23. <laughs> she likes you already. So. <laughs> now she was used in Scotland for hunting, uh, catching mostly rabbit and hare, and also for educational programs, which is what she's used for here in Vermont. And she's been with us here for about eight years now. She's got a beautiful six foot wingspan, but she only weighs four and three quarter pounds. And we'll keep coming back to this. Flying is work, they don't really want to do it, and they'll keep it as efficient as possible. Now, mostly birds are prey. The best we can do is get them to tolerate people. But she does seem to be very intrigued. She's, she does, really. Yeah, she very seems strange. like, you know, like my left profile is yeah, better. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, take, take the other side. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to pout? <laughs> now, we've chosen the Harris Hall because it is so laid back because we can condition it to have a different handler each time it goes out. Now because he's an impatient little bird, <laughs> he's coming before we asked him. Okay. If he comes back without being asked, I won't reward him. If we ask him to come back, then he gets a piece of beef. Mm. I'm oh. going to have you call him in by raising your hand towards me and making a fist. Oh. And he lands really Whoa. gently. Oh, isn't that something? Isn't that cool? trained your bird to come back to you, you've manned it, you've got it used to you, you're nearly ready to fly it free. The one thing you have left to do is to teach him to come back to the lure. It gets their attention. So if he's up in a tree ignoring me, maybe he's what we call self-hunting, where he's waiting for something else to, to run out to so he can chase it. Mm -hmm. I can throw the lure onto the ground and his instinct to hunt is so strong that he's very unlikely to ignore this, even though he was ignoring my hand. It's like a dog throw, you only throw a tennis ball for a dog, it's a predator, it runs and grabs with its mouth, because as a predator, that's what it does, it grabs, it hunts to catch you with its mouth. Even though it knows a tennis ball isn't a rabbit and it can't eat it, it will go through that just to satisfy that predatory instinct. He sees it flash past in front of him, it takes him a few seconds to release, and I've hidden it. No ill feeling, because wow. if I went in there and stole it out of his feet, he'd get really resentful. Next time I approached him, he's going to try to carry his prey into a tree where he gets left in peace. Uh. So instead, he doesn't know what really happened. He's given up his kill. I've got him back. He's ready to hunt some more. And that's really what's been done for three, four thousand years.